And so with that, I'd like to welcome back to the stage BJ Rao um, to share a bit about what we've built toward our aim of enabling the industry to adapt. Thanks. Great, thanks, Cara. I, uh, I'm very good at stating the obvious, so I'm going to start off with the pace of change in the video landscape today is, is pretty dizzying. And it's not only dizzying, but it's also incredibly disruptive for all of our clients. And some of the things that Amir talked about in his, his keynote, actually, there's a video. There's a video, isn't it? video was a perfect encapsulation of the dizzying pace of change. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what are some of those themes that, that we talked about today? That are, again, very intuitive to, to a lot of you. One is just the infinite choice available to both consumer and marketer. The second is the complexity of managing video campaigns across three screens. The proliferation of data, we're basically collecting so much data we're almost swimming in it, right? There is an overabundance, and sometimes it's difficult to see the wood from the trees. That's coupled with this real emphasis today on real time, right? Being a real time marketer, dynamic, nimble, predictive versus reactive. And of course, for all of us, there's this huge onus on accountability and ROI from our clients. And of course, smack bang in the middle of all of that is the growing influence and importance of technology. Right? Technology to add an additional layer of sophistication and automation to organize some of this chaos. And of course, that represents the perfect storm of opportunity for Adapt TV and our offering. And over the course of the next 10 minutes, I'm going to take you through a demo um, of, our, of our platform that I hope really conveys to you both the simplicity and the power of what we offer. There are two things that I really want you guys to take away, hopefully, if I do my job properly. The first is, as you saw in that video, it's a lot of complexity behind our offering. But the actual user experience is beautifully simple. As you'll see, any of you, within a matter of minutes, can log on to our platform and execute on a pretty sophisticated buy across thousands of publishers, across multiple screens, while also understanding in real time the true value of what you're paying for. And the second is our platform really arms buyers with intelligence, right? Intelligence garnered across thousands of campaigns, millions of impressions that help a buyer start to understand the sometimes complex relationship between their media choices, the um, price of what they're paying, and ultimately the outcome of their campaigns, all predictively prior to running a single impression. So, Give you a bit of context. I am going to put on the hat of a, uh, of a media buyer, uh, overworked, underpaid, which is very close to home. Um, and the goal of, of me, Mr. Media Buyer, is to run a campaign for Acme Laundry. And Acme Laundry has a fairly generic uh, woman 35 to 54 CPG target. And my myopic focus as media buyer for Acme Laundry is to deliver women 35 to 54 as, a, as efficiently and as cheaply as possible. OK, so um, I'm going to walk you through again, step by step, the process that I would go in and execute a buy. The first thing I'm going to do is start to create a shell around my campaign. And I want this campaign to run for one month, July 1st, July 30th. I want it to all be 30s. It's got to be pre-roll. I want it to be user initiated. And my goal for this campaign over 30 days is 10 million impressions. OK, fairly straightforward. The next thing that I'm going to do is actually go up to my bid and optimization tab and put in the maximum value of inventory from a CPM perspective that I'm willing to pay, my, my tolerance. And in this instance, it's $10. And the first thing that you'll notice on the far right-hand side of the screen, my right, um, or your right rather, is this fancy dandy forecast curve. 
And what this forecast curve is capturing is the real-time supply-demand mechanics across the thousands of publishers and the hundreds of buyers in the Adapt TV marketplace at any given moment in time. Right? And in this instance, the forecast is saying, hey, you've given me some very broad parameters around your campaign. Guess what? There's a total of around 2 billion impressions that are available to you. Okay? The other thing that our forecaster is providing me as the buyer is some intelligence around how that how the campaign will deliver from an audience perspective, right? One of the big themes today has been this notion of common language, common currency. As you'll see, we're increasingly aligning the way in which we frame up digital delivery in ways that are very comfortable and familiar to TV guys. In addition to GRPs, we have in-target impressions, reach, frequency, et cetera. And the forecaster is saying to me in this instance, hey, again, you've given me some very broad parameters to the buy. The organic delivery of your campaign is going to be 50-50 male-female. I'm at the, the bottom here. Now, my goal here is not to organically deliver impressions to male-female, right? My goal is women 35 to 54. So this is where some of the intelligence tools in the Adapt TV platform take front and, uh, and center stage. So I'm going to go over to my in-target optimization tab, and I'm going to plug in women 35 to 54. And what the optimizer is doing is filtering out sites that do poorly against women 35 to 54 and pushing impressions to a small subset of sites that do really well against women 35 to 54. And as you can see in my forecaster, it's giving me some, again, some really granular detail on how this is going to deliver. So second from top is this notion of in-target impressions. For every 100 impressions in this campaign, 35% are going to be delivered in target to women 35.54. From an in target CPM perspective, that $10 converts to 28.57. Again, something that's very native to the way in which TV is transacted. And that male female ratio that was approximately 50 50 is now 62.38. Pretty good, right? And again, this is all predictive. I haven't run a single impression. And these numbers are being powered by Nielsen OCR, right? So they're not adapt TV numbers, they're separation of church and state. So as a media buyer, I have a couple of options here, right? One is I can actually tweak my pricing. I could tweak my pricing from $10 upwards. And the other option I have is I could potentially apply third-party data targeting over this small subset of sites that do well against women 35 to 54. So I'm going to choose the latter. I'm going to actually go into my targeting tab and see what the impact is of applying third-party data. And what you'll see is from a targeting perspective, there's just a variety of choices, right? Really transparent choices on ways in which I can filter my campaign appropriately to the right audience. I can, at the click of a switch, target by individual platform and device, connected TV, mobile, tablet, etc. Target, obviously, by geography, placement, auto-initiated or user-initiated. And then even down to the site level, right? I can get as granular as five sites. I can choose as many as 5,000 sites. But again, the goal here is transparency and control for the buyer. But my goal here is to apply third-party targeting, and that's what I'm going to do. And our platform is open. It's, uh, it's an open, flexible API platform. And as you'll see, we have a plethora of data providers that already come standard. You can plug and play with 20-plus data providers. And very con conveniently, there are a couple of data providers, Quantcast and Exalate, that both have a uh, women 35 to 54 segment. So I'm going to pick those two and see what the impact is on my forecast curve. I'm hoping that this, this uh, delivers a more effective campaign than prior. So the first thing that you'll notice is the forecast curve is now saying, look, you've now made a small subset um, of sites as part of your core plan. You applied data targeting. You did have 2.4 billion impressions to you. Given those two things, you now have approximately 45 million impressions to you that match Quantcast or Exalate Women 35 to 54. The second thing it tells me is, Guess what? Your campaign delivery against women 35 to 54 is projected to be an improvement over option one. 43% of impressions will be in target versus 35. My in target CPM has declined almost $5. And my male female split has gone from 60 uh, 40 to 70 30. Okay? So if I was a TV buyer at this point, I'd be doing uh, cartwheels. That would actually be a pretty great in target CPM to reach women 35 to 54. They're pretty tough segment of the population, about 18% of the population, and that's pretty great. But I'm a greedy media buyer, and I have the power of the Adapt TV platform 
to make smarter decisions. So the third, the third variable is actual price. So I've messed around with my site list, I've messed around with data. The third thing that I can mess around with is actually the cost of my inventory. On the hunch that if I increase my bid from 10 to $15, I'm actually gonna gain access to more expensive sites that better deliver my audience more efficiently, okay? So I'm gonna increase my bid to $15. I'm gonna go to the, the arbiter of truth, my forecast curve, and guess what? Again, surprise, surprise. My in-target delivery has gone up to 52%. My male-female impressions have gone from 70-30 to 79-21, almost 80-20. Pretty great, right? But interestingly, my in-target CPM, which was 23 bucks, has gone up to $28, right? You wouldn't assume this on first blush. And what the forecaster is saying is that even though for every 100 impressions, you're getting more impressions in target, the cost per incremental percentage point in target is progressively getting more inefficient. And there's actually a point of diminishing return between $10 and $15 that makes this option less viable, right? And that, in a nutshell, is the power of our platform, right? The, the ability predictively to understand the somewhat complex relationship between media choice, cost of inventory, the application of data, and potential outcomes in your campaign. Any questions? If a publisher has uh, very precise information, declared information about their, their, um, about their user base, how do you, can this information be added to the, uh, to the platform? Yeah. I, I can take yeah. that. So first of all, uh, I just want to explain to everybody else, we have a lot of serious impression and we already get information about the results of the campaign. So uh, that connects to my talk from earlier today about the importance of unified platform to actually yeah. having uh, data about the cell side. We call it cell side intelligence. This is the result of cell side intelligence. What does it actually mean? We run the Nielsen audit on every single Im impression of every single publisher that is on our platform in order to uh, aggregate the information that then make it available, uh, that make such predictions available to buyers. So. Usually in a system, you need to run the campaigns and you get information only on the uh, inventory you buy. We actually aggregate continuously at this moment a ton of information about every single impression that is managed by the ADAP TV platform. And this is the information that is being leveraged. So basically what we do is we train a classifier to predict what would Nielsen think about every single impression. And what you see here is uh, in real time calculation of um, um, what is the optimized set of impressions to uh, maximize your goal and the results of this. So may sound uh, complicated. It is complicated, but it's also very simple to operate. Uh, and to your question, we do not yet leverage first party data from publishers, but this is definitely something that is on our product roadmap. Because if I'm a, if I'm a consumer right now and I'm looking at audience information about publisher inventory, I actually want an independent third party. If I'm just buying age sex, I want someone that's not, that doesn't have a vested interest to tell me what, who that is, right? And that's Nielsen in this instance. So for the publishers in the room, all of this functionality is also available in the private marketplace. So you can sell your own inventory with Nielsen optimization so you minimize the waste. More and more advertisers come to premium publishers and set in-target goals or in-target commitments and um, Publishers are challenged by it because traditional regular ad servers don't know how to maximize for Nielsen in target delivery. In our private marketplace, you can actually uh, do it. So it's another way of increasing CPM, increasing value for premium publishers. Okay. Great, thank you.